Hard hard pesy up, pissing cuscadly, lamblimch, Welcome to Indian time. This month is, is uh, the month of, of March, the month of the geese, when uh, the geese fly back from the south. Uh, as we we see a lot of the signs already out there, the the birds are out, they're singing. Uh, the good sign of spring is right around the corner. These are the signs that our elders of the past have always looked at and and watched for. And when they see these signs of the geese coming back and other birds, it was a time of happiness, a time of of knowing that they have made it through another long winter and that they were looking forward to to spring to warmer weather to do a lot of things that they that they do uh, to survive uh, to fish uh, to dig roots to gather medicine and food for the rest of the year till winter time again these were the things that the, the elders always looked forward to and were happy when they made it through another winter. Some winters were very, very hard for uh, our Indian people in the past. Today we have it uh, pretty simple and pretty easy, and I don't know if any of us could survive if we uh, were to go back at the time that our el elders and ancestors were, were living through these uh, harsh winters that we had in the past. Uh, the place names that we have for today is, uh, or we'll have is, uh, in uh, Chichi Titna, in Chichi Titna, which is a place uh, uh, between Dry Fork Reservoir and the Upper Dry Fork Reservoir, and down up in the uh, uh, Hot Springs area. And evidently, uh, there was a place where there, where there was a lot of these alders in the area, and as we know from from our our parents and our elders at JJ Tanel was, was something that was used to, to as a dye. They would boil, peel the bark, and they would boil it, and it would make a red dye. When after it was boiled, and they would put things in it to, to dye a, a reddish color, not a, not a bright red, but a reddish color. So that was uh, one of the things that they they used it for. So in Chichi Tene, so a place with uh, a place of alder trees. Evidently, there was a, a, a lot of alders in, in a certain area. The other word, uh, place name, will be Chastkin. Uh, Chastkin uh, is a, what they call it, a top, I guess, a good hill. Is a, is a peak uh, just west of Hot Springs, what is placed now Chastkin. Um, also known as a place where they went and uh, uh, gathered some chasachs, a place uh, high up that in the mountains is where you get chasachs. So this is evidently a place where they went to gather uh, chasachs. Uh, west, uh, they call it chastchen, west of hot springs. Other reminders for uh, this show is uh, the 16th, uh, I'd like to remind you, at, rather the 13th is the, uh, some of the workshops or some of the family gatherings that they have down in St. Ignatius. Uh, on the 13th is Feel Good with Exercise with Lynn Vandenberg, or Lynn Vandenberg, oh, she killed kill me for that one, Lynn Hendrickson. Um, and it's uh, at a building that's at the, uh, where is it at now, it's at the, um, community building on Blind Barnaby Street in St. Ignatius. That's just west of the Longhouse. 
Uh, if you have any uh, questions on this, call Irene Lake or Brenda Morton at uh, 745-3525 at Tribal Health. That's 745-3525 for questions that you might have on these uh, family gatherings. Call Brenda or Irene. Also this week on the 16th, again, remind you to go out and help uh, Ushni Kenmel uh, celebrate her 85th birthday. Uh, 85th, 85 years of, uh, of hard living. She's uh, worked hard. Uh, you listen to her, tell her stories and where she came through and, and the things that uh, she still does today. Uh, she started making her living at age 15, scraping in tannin hides, and she continues to do that today. Uh, her uh, beadwork and her is, is very distinct. You know, you can see it, you, you know who made it. You know that Ushni Kenmel has made these. And, and she's had orders, made, uh, pre sent out orders from requests from throughout the country and probably other nations by now. So she's gonna celebrate her 85th on the 16th and 17th at Two Eagle uh, River School at the gym. So uh, there will be a, uh, Grand entry at 7 o'clock on Friday. Uh, Stig game will be played uh, immediately following the powwow. Uh, grand entry on Saturday is at 1 o'clock. There will be a feast at 4, and then another grand entry, grand entry at 7 that evening. So if you have nothing better to do, go help Ushni celebrate uh, her birthday. Uh, those are a few of the things that I'd like to remind you of. Also, during the month of... Uh, of March, on March the 5th in 1870, the death of uh, Chief Victor uh, took place and it was succeeded by his son, um, uh, Ochis, uh, was it, Zemchech Ochis, which is Charlo. And on the, what else do we have here in the month of, uh, of uh, March. In um, 1884, on the 16th, March 16th, 1884, passage of the uh, General Allotment Act, or Dawes Act, took place, setting in motion the allotment and opening of Indian reserva uh, the re reservations in the United States. On uh, March the 17th, in 1853, Isaac Stevens um, named, was named uh, the first governor and Superintendent of Indian Affairs of Washington Territory, which included Western Montana at that time. On the March the 20th in 1856, uh, the Jaco Agency established, was established near Arlie. And on March the 22nd, 1847, Fort Kona, established near Post Creek by Frank MacArthur and Agnes Ang Agnes Angus McDonald of the uh, Hudson Bay Company. Uh, also on this day, on uh, March the 13th, will be Agnes Poker Jim Paul birthday. She'll be 91 years old. And it's a, it's a celebration for her, but it's also a sad time to be, not to be shared. Uh, this birthday with her husband, John. Um, I, I mentioned in the past show, I'm gonna do a special show uh, in honor of uh, John Peter Paul, uh, either in the next, sometime this next couple of shows, I should be, I'm gathering some stuff together, uh, some pictures together, and as soon as I get them all together, I'm, I'm gonna do, a show for uh, in honor of John, dedicated to John. So be looking forward for that. As I said last week, last at the last show, we did we ran out of time. So Louis back to finish um, the translation part of the story that we started. Uh, uh, he told it in Salish last week. This week he's going to do the English translation of how the people uh, came about and how we got Flint. So it's a story of, of, 
of how the creator and coyote and how we got flint as we used that we used back then as tools, uh, as weapons, and many different things. So. Um, Lou is here to finish that story, and with that, again, I'd like to uh, welcome Louie and thank Louie for joining us again to finish up on the story. Uh, Louie uh, is a past tribal councilman. He's uh, part of our uh, cultural advisories uh, group down in, in St. Ignatius. Uh, he's uh, been very helpful in many different issues with his background. Uh, the stories that he shares from his family. So with that, I'd like to introduce Louis and have him finish his translation of the story that he had last week. Louis? Thank you. Uh, to get into the, the story of Coyote and, uh, and his little friend, the fox, they were walking, walking through the woods one day this little little path and they saw this beautiful rock it was big and it was round it was a perfect rock so the coyote took off his blanket and he put it over this rock He's, he he really liked the, the nice rock there he put it over it and he said probably when it rains you you get wet so with that they they kept going they went just a little ways and and they realized it was going to rain. I guess they heard thunder, and then there was a few drops. So they, they got under some willows. They made a little shelter. And he told he told the fox, he says, "Go back to that rock. Go back and borrow our, go b borrow his blanket. Tell him as soon as it quits raining, we'll bring it back." So the fox ran back, and he told the uh, told the rock, he said, uh, "Coyote wants to borrow back your blanket." He said, "As soon as it, as soon as the rain." Let's up, we'll, he'll bring it back. Rock said, no. So he ran back and he told Coyote, he said, he said, no. So the Coyote told him, go, go back over there, go back over there, because we don't want to get too wet. He said, tell him soon, soon as it's done raining, we'll, we'll bring the blanket back. So he, Fox run back over there and told him, Fox said, we don't want to get wet. As soon, soon, as, soon as it's done raining, he'll, he'll bring it back to you. No, he said. So he ran back and told the coyote. He said, no. He said, no. Oh, the coyote got mad about that. He says, since when did he ever have a blanket? <coughs> I'll go get it. So he ran back over there to the rock and pulled the blanket off. Said, since when did you ever have a blanket, you know? So he went back and they put it over their shelter. He said, and they, they got underneath there. It rained pretty hard. And pretty soon when the rain let up, they heard a rumble. They heard it a couple times. And he told Fox, go out and see what that was. Fox went out and looked around. Uh, he come back and did nothing. Just as he sat down, he'd hear it again, a rumble. So he said, oh, there is something out there. He told Fox, go look. So Fox went out and looked around. He come back in. He says, oh, there's nothing. And just as they sat down again, boy, this time it was loud. He said, there is something. It's getting close. Better look. So Fox went outside. He, here come that rock. He told the coyote, that rock is coming. It's rolling this way. Coyote come outside. By golly, it is. He, took his blanket off of their shelter. And he said something to that rock, I forgot what it was. I, but they start running and he just said, ah, what, what can he do, you know? They, they start running. He said, and pretty soon they look back, God, this rock was coming faster. And boy, it was getting close to them. They were getting tired. They kept going all of a sudden through this nice flat place. Coyote seen a hole in the ground. He told Fox, jump in there. Fox jumped in there, and just as he jumped in there, that rock hit the mouth of that, but just caught the fox's tail. That's, that's why he's got a white tip on his tail. <laughs> and the coyote, boy, he was, he was still running away. And that rock kept coming, coming. I saw a little ridge. So he started up this ridge, zigzagged up there. He said, ah, if this rock comes up this, this ridge, he'll roll back down. 
got on top and he looked back. By golly, that rock was coming. So he took off again. Went and he went over another, another hill. Saw a river down there. Hey, by golly. I'll, I'll jump in that river. He said, when this rock jumps in, that, that'll be it. It's, no, the river's deep. He'll never make it out. Went and he jumped in the river. Swam across there and he come up on the other side. And sat down. Oh, he was tired. He was sitting there just starting to rest. And here come that rock out of the water. Ah, uh, coyote. Took off again. Kept running away. Went and going through this nice open place. And he was getting tired. This rock was right behind him. And he's running and he heard, heard something. He says, this way, coyote. So he looked and there was two buffalo bulls standing. Boy, they were mad. They were digging the ground, just making all kinds of dust. He got close and they told him, come between us. So he ran between them and the rock come between them and they hit that rock. Down they went. That rock killed them both. So Coyote kept going. Oh, he was tired. He went. Went and he heard something else. And he looked because somebody says, this way, Coyote. He looked, there was two little old ladies standing way up there, little, little bitty things. There. And they each had a stone axe. So he thought, well, these buffalo were big and they were strong. Yet that rock killed them. But then I have no choice, you know. So he headed that way. Went and the old ladies told him, come between us. So he did and the rock went. That's when they, they both hit that rock with their stone axes and it just made a, a ringing sound for a long time. And when all that ended, all that rock just, just crushed that rock. It fell into pieces and it just fell right there. Coyote come back and he said, uh, here you're a monster. He said, when this world changes and there are people, you will be known as Flint. So he put his blanket down there and he put all these pieces of rock, uh, Flint in there, busted pieces, and put it over his shoulder and he left. My grandma used to mention the places he went, and I, I can't remember. But he'd go in some certain place, he'd set that down, he'd take that and scatter it all over. He said, this is for, this is for the people coming someday, they'll, they'll have flint to make knives, and spears, and arrows, arrowheads, and scrapers, whatever else flint is going to be used for. So he'd take the, what was left and go again. Some other place, he'd stop and scatter some more. And she used to say the last place he brought it away, in the far country, the last bit he had in there was starting to mold. And that was the last place he scattered that. She, she used to say, uh, once in a while she'd see Indian come from that country. I forgot what, what tribe it was. And sometimes they'd have some of that flint. Some of it would be white. Some would be kind of pino colored, white and black. She said it was pretty, but that was the, the moldy, mm -hmm. the, the last of it. But that's the story my grandma used to tell me, mm -hmm. how it got flint. Great. With that, we're, we'll go ahead and take a short break here and we'll be right back. Sometimes life can seem a bit overwhelming, especially when things are changing so fast. I've found that it really helps to stay connected during those times. That's why I reach out to family, friends, and people I look up to when I need some good advice or just someone to talk to. It's amazing how sharing can really raise your spirits. Take time to connect with someone in your life, and if you don't have someone, Big Brothers Big Sisters can help. Hello? <laughs> Welcome back uh, to India Time. Uh, Louis, we have about oh, just a few minutes left. I'd like to maybe uh, ask you to tell us a little about yourself, and where you were born, where you were raised, that kind of stuff. Okay. I was born in, in Schlei at uh, Sam Resurrection's house. 
67 years ago. And uh, I spent a good part of my, my growing up years there. Then we moved down to my grandma's place down by Stevens's. And from there to Valley Creek, and, and that's where I spent the rest of my life with, with uh, my neighbors, Joe Finley, and that passed away here a few weeks back, and, and the McDonald's that used to come up there all the time, and the Woodcocks, and I spent a lot of time with those, well, we were kids together, uh, Lomi Woodcocks family, and, and, and a lot of them people, and spent a lot of time up in in the Arley area with Vital Stevens and his family and uh, they call up towards up toward uh, the old church and that that that's a that come from when the Indians first got there and they I guess the government built sawmills whatever they built there and that's why that got that name for the boards so they call it for all the all the lumber I guess that come out of there but uh, I uh, spent quite quite most of my life up in that area until I joined the Navy. Did a hitch there and then come back and went to work for Diamond Match in Superior for a number of years. Then Van Evan, Missoula. Then back to Valley Creek, did a little ranching and raising a few horses. Yeah, Diamond Match was a big outfit. Back yeah, then. Diamond Match Company. But that's about the extent of my life. I spent many years on a council and tried to try to help whatever way I could for our people and land animals. And I know you guys uh, you went camping a lot up in a the, lot up in a the lot South Fork and yeah. Uh, does yeah. those areas changed a lot over the years, or are they pretty much? Uh, not too much. I mean, with uh, when they logged in there, it changed. But after we closed it, after they logged, to, closed it to any more logging, it's improved a lot. It's uh, you've been up there. You've mm -hmm. seen the the regrowth, regeneration, and there's uh, it's a nice area for our traditional uh, medicines and different things that we we pick, mm -hmm. berries, whatever. A lot of fish anymore. I don't know if anybody goes. I would, who, who camps up there anymore? Uh, I know that Pascal and them, they're all gone. Well, it took me a, quite a while to to go back up and camp, you know, because uh, I miss those people, mm -hmm. Jerome and Agnes, and I don't know, see my core ever. They were, I was at, mm -hmm. and I, for a long time, I, I didn't uh, go up, but I, I, I go up there again. I mean, I know what they'd say. You keep on camping, you know, mm -hmm. because it's not the end. Our people always said, We'll all be together again. We'll all be happy. <clears throat> now, the, you was on the council for how many years? Uh, about 14 or 15 years, somewhere in that neighborhood. I never really did count it up. So you were on, off? On yeah, the... yeah. I, I was booted out for a time or two and then went back in and got a few people trying to urge me to run again. I said, no way, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> uh, uh, so a lot of the stories that, uh, you know, someday ho hopefully will, you know, get you back here to, to share some of those old stories. Yeah, so gladly. I know there's so many yeah. things that you know, especially for the younger generations that never had that chance to, I guess, to hear the stories from the elders. To you know, so yeah. uh, so it's it's not the same as as reading. You know, when you yeah. hear somebody tell these stories, so yeah. so someday you know maybe we'll just spend some time just having you tell some stories. You know, and that's you know a lot of a lot of the work that we have at the at the longhouse. A lot that's how we got a lot of that information. Yeah. Is that just we had a table, you know, gathered with the the elders back then, and they were that's all they did was yeah, tell yeah. stories. You know, one would tell right. stories, somebody would try to tell a better story, and you know yeah. they were just yeah. uh, and that's how we learn. Yep. You know, now some of the things that we don't 
remember or we, we have never experienced, you know, we do it through the elders and, yeah. and how the, they've seen the changes and, and, uh, and, and I think today we can learn, you know, in our management plan a lot of the things mm -hmm. that we do. So, so I'd, I'd be glad to. It'd be great. So I guess uh, with that, do you have anything else to add before we close? Mm -hmm. No. Just thank, thank you and the staff here for having me share what little I know. Okay, well that's, that's I think it's, it's us that benefit from, from you being here, Louis. And it's, and you know me, I've always had a great, you know, a great respect for, for the older people, for our elders, with the knowledge of, of our Indian people. That, to me, that's, you know, that's who we are and that's the foundation and the strength of who we are as Indian people. So anything that we learn, anything that we hear, only adds to, to our knowledge, to the, to the strength of who we are. So I want to thank you for sharing, especially your story of the Flint. You yeah. know, that was, uh, again, that was something that I think was almost lost because as time goes on, that stories get shorter and shorter, but you know, then yeah. somebody like yeah. you comes in, tells a story, then it gets, you know, gets back up there until long. So I think with that, uh, I'd like to say again, Lem Lem Louis, for your, your help. And, uh, and I want to say, Lupi, as ya, Lupi, in Bachbachot, Lem Lem Chlu, Kesol Kshisl, Kesmail, Louis Toch, Lukex Chkud, Lukex Chkulpach, Lukhodes Ya, Lukhod Kesm Kuskeli, Nelly Hulche, you yet hack as Kuishmi. Make all shield, guess coupled, guess may a little with talk look extra good. Lemon lumps looping, or pohot lupis and cuscadly. Hasts hard hard names, and let's switch to me. Lemon lumps.